Okay, we go to the next chapter on cars and light commercial vehicles. What are the plans of the European Commission to speed up the transition for road transport, uh, specifically cars and light commercial vehicles? We already have a lot of um, regulation in place, but this is one of those directives that is severely strengthened and tightened up. Uh, road transport is responsible for about 20% of emissions in the European Union and about 7% 7 of, of the gross domestic product. So a big chunk of our economy as well is related to road transport. How is, um, how is this currently governed? Let's start where we are now. Well, producers of cars and light commercial vehicles have to um, um, commit to a, an efficiency um, uh, a sort of an emission intensity of the newly produced cars that they register newly on the market. So if I'm a car producer, let's say Renault, of all the cars that I bring on the market in a specific year, the, the, the average emission intensity of those cars should be 95 grams of CO2 per kilometer. And if I would, I would bring uh, small vans, light commercial vehicles on the market, that uh, uh, standard would be 147 grams of CO2 per, per kilometer. By 2025, current leg, this is not the pro Green New proposal, this is current regulation, that, that standard is 15% lower. And by 2030, uh, it is 37.9% lower for cars and 31% lower for light commercial vehicles. On top of that, current legislation states a separate ambition for zero emission vehicles. So by 2030, 35% of newly registered cars should be zero emission. And by 2030, 30% of light commercial vehicles should be zero emission. Now, the first thing you do when you uh, want to make this directive more stringent and go to a higher level is obviously to cancel this last KPI, right? That may not sound logical, but that's exactly what the European Commission is proposing. This separate KPI on zero emission vehicles uh, goes out of the window. And why do they do that? Because simply the uh, uh, emission intensity that is allowed for newly registered cars goes to zero by 2035. So by 2035, um, the, the, the CO2 intensity of newly registered cars and light commercial vehicles should be zero. That's it. There's your uh, target, 100%. So uh, a, a severe strengthening of these uh, these, uh, these emission standards, um, uh, specifically to which producers is this um, um, applied? Again, newly registered vehicles in Europe. So if I'm Renault and I bring newly registered cars on the market in the US, those are outside the scope of this regulation. Also, um, Current uh, rules state that um, only car producers producing more than 10,000 units would be under the uh, under the regulation, and for light commercial vehicles, that threshold is 22,000. And light commercial vehicles should be below 2,610 kilograms. So that's really the type of van you see right here, not the big trucks, right? So. What is happening with big trucks? Well, they are under a monitoring and verification um, um, system. We know how, how that ended up for, for the shipping industry. But we also know from the previous chapters that um, the, any fuel they use will actually be taxed highly uh, by the new ETS on fuel suppliers. So also there, there are a lot of incentives already to, to, um, to make the shift to zero emission vehicles and fuels. But this, these emission standards apply only to these type of cars and vans. Now, the updated um, standards now state that this already applies if you produce more than 1,000 cars or 1,000 light commercial vehicles. So also the smaller producers will now be, have to commit to, these, um, to this regulation. Now, the, the big question may be, why do car producers actually follow these rules? So, to give you an idea, I, I provide a very simplified example. Let's assume again we are Renault and we only produce the uh, uh, Renault Clio TCE 90 Energy Limited. This is not an electric car. By now they have an electric version of this car. This is still um, petrol. Let's assume we only produce this car. This car 
um, uh, uh, oh, sorry, in 2025, the norm uh, through via this regulation would be 81 grams of CO2 per, per kilometer. That's the what the, our our portfolio standard for for Renault, for us. Um, this Renault Clio is our only car, so and it, it produces 94 grams of CO2 per kilometer. Uh, based on um, on this regulation, we would have to uh, we would have access emissions of 13 grams of CO2 per kilometer, and for those access emissions, we have to pay a premium of 95 euros. We have to multiply that by the number of newly registered vehicles that we bring to the market. In the case of Renault, there were, recently was 1.2 million new vehicles to the European market, and that brings us to a a fine. This is actually the envelope that you get, uh, the, the envelope of death that uh, Dutch consumers get uh, in their mailbox if they have a speeding ticket. So uh, now you know why. Um, if Renault would only produce this type of car and continue to do so by 2025, they would face a fine of 1.5 billion euros. Ouch. Uh, but it gets worse. It gets worse because the 2030 norm is 43 grams, grams of CO2 per kilometer. So we do the same exercise and we end up with a yearly fine of 5.8 billion euros. Ouch, ouch. Uh, now you can imagine why we see these headlines in the newspaper. Former world EV leader Renault plans 10 new, new EVs, lower costs by 2025. And Volkswagen wants half of its vehicle sales to be electric by 2030. Mercedes is fast-tracking its EV plans. And, and mind the subtitle here, I mean everyone is. Daimler just wants you to know that they're doing it too. What I want to say about this is, it, it, this may seem like the, fine, the light finally went on uh, in, the, uh, in the boardrooms of these uh, car producers, but basically you can also replace the names of these car producers with EU, because basically the EU is the driving force with this regulation become behind this complete overhaul of um, uh, production portfolios towards battery electric vehicles. Summary on this chapter, um, by 2035, all newly registered uh, passenger cars and light commercial vehicles will have to be emission free. Also smaller producers, up from 1,000 units per year will, will be included. High, the high fine remains the, the key incentive for all these producers and big trucks are not covered by this mechanism, but the, they have to monitor and verify. And obviously, as I mentioned, their fuel prices will go up because an ETS is introduced on fuel suppliers. Quickly check on the questions. Um, how do the upstream emissions from EV cars come together with the other mechanisms like CBAM or are they not addressed at all? Good question. EV cars, they charge electricity, but the electricity may still come from coal-fired power plants or other sources, depending on where you charge in Europe. Um, uh, obviously, those sources are already under an emission trading scheme. So that balloon is shrinking, and over time, you'll see that all sources of electricity will also become emission-free. That is just a matter of time. So we, 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 we look at systemic change here on all the components of the supply chain. So electricity will become clean, uh, the cars will be, will be running on, 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 on electricity, and already it, is, it, it pays to switch to electric vehicles because um, yeah, uh, um, uh, fossil fuels are quickly phased out. Coal-fired power plants are closing in 2030 in, in the Netherlands, the, the few that we have left, uh, and similar patterns are visible in the rest of the EU. Um, will the social climate fund for ETS in buildings be effective in reducing CO2 emissions in poor households if they receive compensation for the price increase and nothing changes? Um, well, obviously, you would only get compensation if your prices would be um, uh, would be would be rising. Um, I can imagine um, that there would be uh, that there, there would be uh, and and this is again. Up to, the, uh, up to the member states to draft plans that make sure that uh, both, I mentioned it at the start, a proportional amount of sustainability improvements is 
um, is uh, you get that under those um, households living under energy poverty. So there is definitely a big chunk of, of um, energy efficiency improvements and more sustainable solutions under those households. Um, and for those that cannot yet make the move or will not or otherwise they are compensated. So it will always be a mix of that. But that's, I guess, all up to drafting the, these uh, um, social climate plans that have to be approved by the European Commission. This is the control mechanism to, to make sure this all works together.